In patch 2.4, the Amazon's bow skills sadly didn't get near as much of a buff as I was hoping, but regardless, there were some interesting changes that did impact one of my standard builds, the Strafe Zon. Now, the reason I love this build and always have is because it's an easy and lazy build once you get the later game gear. Since you literally take a few steps, strafe, everything dies, and then you move forward a bit and do exactly the same. Now, there have been claims that this is stronger than a multi-shot Amazon, though as it stands, an actively played multi-shot Amazon is still a pinch faster for me with similar gear, but the strafer has definitely gotten closer for a lot less work and concentration needed for the actual run, so it's another build that's excellent to farm with while, say, listening to a podcast or watching a YouTube video. For today's version of it, I'm actually leaning into strafe heavily, but also investing in some other skills for discussion's sake, since there's a few talking points I'd like to hit as well based on some recent comments. But before we dive into that, let's get the basics out of the way. Starting with stats, there's two ways to kit out a physical boson, regardless of whether you're multi-shot or strafe, and that is either going glass cannon, which is enough strength for gear and bare minimum vitality to make you comfortable, and then maximizing dexterity for the percentage damage boost it provides to bows. If you're fine with refreshing battle orders regularly on swap, then this is I the ideal one for you. For me, I prefer farming while listening to streams, so I go the tankier approach. Enough strength and dexterity for gear, and then slapping the rest into vitality so I don't have to worry about pre-buffing or rebuffing while running. As far as the skills, the only skill you absolutely need for a strafer is, well, strafe to go with your good bow, and with removal of the strafe damage penalty, it does thankfully have a reasonable damage buff now. But of course, you also have plenty of points to spend elsewhere, of which there's basically the option of three types of paths. You have the hybrid javazon, which uses javelins and strafe, as far as strafe with a bow, javelins with javelins. Mage zon, which is your elemental kind of bow amazon you can actually combine fire with strafe or ice with strafe and actually make something interesting or what we did here just the pure strafer which basically means just investing in passive and magic tree and letting magic arrow handle the physical immunes which works out pretty well especially if you get enough points in magic arrow to make it free at level 13 after plus skills in regards to our passive trees, which is pretty much the rest of our skill points, I chose what I did because they're useful first, but also because there's some misconceptions about a few skills. First up, Valkyrie. Commonly thought of as just a tank, she actually can match the damage of our Pride Mercenary, albeit without jab. This is because she's not only getting those synergies, but as her level increases, so does her base equipment, making these stat buffs even stronger as she starts to get, well, high buffs. Her equipment pool maxes out at all elite rares at level 27. At level 26, she just happens to have a magic circlet instead of a rare tiara. That's the only difference. The other thing not commonly known about the Valkyrie is that there's more to the decoy synergy than meets the eye. While it only lists plus 20% life per level, there's actually also a resistance synergy hidden there as well. Basically of about 2% per hard point in addition to the hidden 2% per level of the Valkyrie itself. That means with 20 points in decoy, we add 40% resist all to our Valkyrie, and with a level 26 Valkyrie giving her 52% resist all, we sit at 92%. But there is a cap. She will sit at 85%, so you could save points in decoy for elsewhere if you have enough plus skills. Now, this cap doesn't apply to her equipment, so you can get 85% base, and then a scintillating or prismatic amulet roll, which she can get pretty easily, and you'll have a 4 immunity Valkyrie. After that, we of course invested in our evasion skills as a prerequisite for Valkyrie, but generally it's a bad idea to over-invest in these, since the diminishing return gets fairly harsh fairly quickly, especially at higher levels. Only time to go further than 50-60% to 60 in any of these would be in very specific situations that most players will not have to deal with. We also grabbed Pierce, which with Razor Tail's 33%, you'll only need to get 67% Pierce, or basically level 9, which is 69% nice to get to 100% pierce since they do stack like on top of each other it just works perfectly fine while things like critical strike don't stack instead they're mutually exclusive with deadly strike meaning if one triggers the other does not I personally like getting this to at least 50% critical strike that is higher if I feel like focusing it since we're doing the lazy strafer I'm more concerned about hitting for knockback reasons but this is an important skill if you're going for maximizing damage even for stuff like magic arrow fire arrow or cold arrow since critical strike applies before the magic arrows convert their damage element meaning it does help it to an extent in terms of helping us hit, we have two skills. I'm going to hammer home Inner Sight a few more times in these videos since there's a lot of misconceptions about it. Basically, it's a flat defense reduction that works against any enemy that it can be hit. At level 26, this means you are dropping most things to zero defense, even with exceptions like Bale being dropped to about half their normal defense. 
The other thing helping us hit is Penetrate. This applies to both yourself and your Valkyrie. So if you're going Valkyrie heavy, it can be a bit bigger benefit to actually go for this instead of Inner Sight. Just don't use this with a Blessed Aim Mercenary or Blessed Aim Paladin, or you'll just be wasting the points invested, unless they patched it when I wasn't looking. As far as the equipment we use with this, there are a few options, but my favorite weapon for it is still Faith, since it has decent damage, fanaticism resists, and ignore target defense. Though it is worth noting, ignore target defense does not work against uniques, bosses, or champions, so you still want a bit of that attack rating or to use Inner Sight. I generally prefer this over Wind Force, but they both are fine. Some cheaper, cheaper alternatives are things like the upgraded Gold Strike, which can be a lot of fun to just drop out a bunch of Fists of the Heavens, or even uh, the new Bow version of Insight, which in my opinion actually beats out Harmony for most builds and is cheaper, but both can be pretty good. After that, we have Lava Gout because... I, again, I don't want to bother with pre-buffing, it's frustrating, and wanted more attack rating and a pinch of fire damage, but you could go with Laying of Hands if you're primarily doing bosses or demon-rich areas like Chaos Sanctuary, or even an attack speed with Leech kind of pair of gloves that just kind of speed stuff up and make things a lot easier. There's a lot of crafted gloves that are pretty good for that. Ring-wise, we go with a standard dual leech ring. You can see me transfer everywhere because we do need life and mana leech for this, as well as Raven Frost for cannot be frozen, dex and attack rating. You can mix things up, use different jewelry for different things. If you get mana leech on your gloves, you don't need mana leech on your ring. It you, there is a balancing act there if you want to drop the price of this build a lot though to avoid du dual leech rings. Belt-wise, though, it's Razor Tail, to an extent for the pierce, but also for the dexterity and boost to maximum damage. And in the boots, we do something similar with War Travelers, since most people forget they add 15 to 25 damage as well, but also they're just good all-round boots. Moving up to the armor, we have the Strafer and Multishot Amazon's best friend, Fortitude, since it's, it's still one of the best armors for boosting the punch of the build, with 300% enhanced damage, among other just really solid modifiers. And in the amulet slot, we help that even more by using Atma's Scarab, which is a lot more efficient for the Strafer than the Multishot Amazon, since every arrow in Strafe can trigger chance to cast, unlike Multishot where it's just the middle arrows. And finally, for that knockback we mentioned earlier, Giant Skull. For this one, I just have some attack speed jewels in it because I use it for other builds and even mercenaries, but you could also put 40% enhanced damage jewels of Fervor in the slots to give yourself a big bump in damage, though that would be super expensive, and I don't... They're not super common. You're not going to find those in single player. Main reason I prefer this over various jeweler helm options is due to the knockback and crushing blow chances on it, but they're both viable options. In terms of mercenary, we went the standard Act 2 Might Mercenary with Pride to maximize damage, with Fortitude and Vampire's Gaze for survivability and damage output. An alternative to Pride would be a Reaper's Toll Mercenary, though you would want to swap out your Atmas for a High Lord's Amulet if you go that route, since Decrepify and Amplify damage would keep overriding each other. Overall, I love playing a few versions of the Strafer just as relaxing builds that I can just sit and shoot, move, repeat, without anything really being a threat. Obviously, at lower end gear, you have to be a bit more engaged since you can't just mow everything down, but with a bit of knockback and reasonable damage, this can be the right click to win build, or in how I play it, shift plus left click to win. 